congratulate each one of you present in the room. You all are, you all are the champions of the industry. Also from the diplomatic circle, your excellencies, you all are championing your diplomatic field. Industrialist, educationist, manufacturers, traders who has come across from all over India and UAE. This topic of panel discussion today, India UAE business relation, should the roots be strengthened or the arms be expanded? India UAE business relation is a millennium old relation wherein in the current stage it is, it is at its all, it's an all time high with the, with the crown prince of Abu Dhabi His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan visiting as a guest, royal guest on 26th January on the Republic Day Prior to that, with the visit of Honorable Prime Minister of India on 16th and 17th of August 2015, a premier visit after 34 years has strengthened this relation. The trade of UAE has exceeded $75 billion. India has a privilege to be in the near proximity of UAE, wherein India, UAE and UAE, India both are their number one trade partners. To discuss more on this, I would like to invite the eminent panelist. First, I would like to request Mr. Hari Mohan Gupta, Chairman of Jagran Social Welfare Society. Welcome, Mr. Hari Mohan. Dr. Manjula Pooja Shroff, MD and CEO of Calorax Group. Mr. Praveen Kumar Nidungari, Director and CEO of IIPL. Please, sir. Please join Ms. Pooja, Mr. Praveen Kumar. Yeah. Mr. Dawal Ajmera. Director Ajmera Reality and Infra India Limited. Mr. Manoj Best, Managing Director of MK Infosystem. Ms. Koheli Puri, Managing Director, Studio XP. And our very own Mr. Pankaj Mundra, Chairman ICAI. On the believe in making world-class quality education more accessible and affordable and thus you help students who are the future of our society achieve their dreams if I connect what you're doing in India as a mission currently with the today's education system in the UAE do you feel that both countries can help each other in advancement of technology in quality of improving the quality of education and given both countries have a lot in positive in their respect of education system. Certainly, of course, 
between UAE and India, they possess very, very old and ancient ties between among both the countries. And uh, as you are listening, that Indian currency used to be the UAE currency, payback. So it's nothing new about it. Of course, UAE has now developed a lot due to the circumstances, circumstances. but as far as education is concerned, India remains a guru. The guru shop comes from India, guru is a teacher. You will not find in the dictionary of Oxford. Guru is who takes one from darkness towards light. So the first university of uh, India was established 1000 years BC. It was Takshila. And the funniest part of it now is that we show ruins of that university. They don't rebuild it. Problems are different, but still technology do work for the educa educating people. But the main crux of the uh, education will lie in its teachers. Eye to an eye contact, a human being, because we teach humans. So human, human written down and the emotional in, in touch will be needed. And that what is there in India. India has a evolved uh, education system. It offers from right from schooling to versatile fields of education, which only almost 30 to 35 countries offer in the world. So a lot can be done. There is an advancement, there is a need for a good education at UAE. Also, India needs good technology. So if we work together, both the countries can benefit. One more thing I'd like to tell you here, that education will only not only mean just teaching, running an institution under the private limited, as we do it in UAE. In India, of course, if you are well versed with it, the system. We are a non-profit organization as per the Constitution of India. Education is under the non-profit, non-profit. So it is a charity. So we have to imbibe ourselves and understand that when we expand our arms in the charity, we have to take in our folds all the people who needs education. So it's very, very well said, Mr. Hari, you know that the Guru, the guru Shab comes from the Indian culture. And of course, you know, the, by by the virtue of, uh, of, the, of the constitution, also you know it, it binds the institution yeah. to, to to deliver wisdom and knowledge rather than learning. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. My question to Mr. Manoj based on my extreme left. You always urge to dream big, and you are a believer of. That if your dreams are not too big, are not will not make people laugh. Your dreams are small. Now, coming back to that, you know you have expanded your business from the, from uh, India to Dubai and Moscow. In this scenario, what are the regional challenges you face as a first-hand experience working in this field of of IT? Uh, yeah. Good evening, all. Uh delegates or the honorable guest and Mr. Mustafa, thank you. See, uh, you recognize, recognize my tagline again, <laughs> dream big and uh, think big and you know, if people are not laughing on your dreams and your goals, that your goal and your dreams are very small. Because a common person will think some, you know, some limitation and if you will think beyond that, then only you can be a some, you know, succeeded and you will be one of the, uh, you know, success person. Yeah, about uh, my business, uh, I have been uh, from India to UAE uh, shifted. So it was warm welcome uh, in UAE. It is uh, just UAE is one of the, you know, uh, we have found, it is a mini world where the all culture, all people stay here and this is one of the smart cities. So we have found warm welcome in our business here. And we have learned lots about professionalism, 
about delivery services and commitments. About the business uh, strengthen between UAE and India, it is already started two years back when our uh, honorable Prime Minister has visited, and it was the you know step when uh, India has started their strengthen uh, for the relationship for business in UAE and India, and it is lots more to do. It's required to do it like uh, you know. Uh, India is already self-developing manufacturing, education, technology, industrialization, all these things. And being is Dubai, one of the developed and luxury, uh, luxury uh, place where everybody would like to stay here. And if we tie up from India uh, with you know, our strength from manufacturing and technology and education and medical, economic and medical and all this. So if we tie up between UAE and uh, India, both can grow together and we can share our idea from UAE to yes, India, India to UAE. And India can set up their manufacturing units and other things also here yeah, so to make some more benefit to UAE. Thank you. Of course, you know, if India can cater to US for their BPOs and, and, and the Infosys requirement, you know, Dubai is much nearer and, and can serve in a better way. Yeah, that's right. My question, Mr. Dawal, as a director of the Ajmera Reality and, Inf and Infra India Limited, you have successfully planned out strategies and project coordinations. In the real estate, real estate world, Dubai and UAE has shown So you know, I, I, I will I'll pass on the question to Mr. Praveen Kumar. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, it's not you know. Then Dawal is uh, on the is, is here. You know, it's coming. Mr. Dawal, you know, uh, Mr. Praveen, you know, you you personally take pride in ensuring that as a project manager, you know, you undertake you, you determine quality and standards. You are a perfection seeker and a renowned expert in real estate industry. When you look at the at the at the impressive architectural structures in the UAE, do you think these architectural structures can be created in India? And if yes, then where? It's already started in India also. Not then. It has already started. But yes, we. Our organization takes great credit ah, okay. Would you like to and see uh, uh, started this organization in 2008 with just about 25 acres of land and just with about 9 to 10 marketing people. Now today the organization holds about 2,000 acres of land and our distribution channel consists of 26,000 people. I think the Italian national day is tonight. Yes. No Italian. Ah, it's in Abu Dhabi now. Yeah. Abu Dhabi. Because here is on Tuesday. Yeah. Yes. And we, would like to we have, yes, gained a lot of expertise in this field. As already mentioned, that we have, we have a lot to learn from each other. Of course, and, you know, India has a lot of expertise here. And, and, and uh, yes, in UAE, and UAE has all the resources to, to make it happen. See, India, the real estate is now taking a good shape because of this real estate uh, regulation act and things like that. And now the customers can also be uh, very relieved because now it will not be easy for the developers to give wrong promises and take the money. And these are right steps. And this kind of regulation is what is required in India, which is coming now. And this kind of, I mean, we can learn a lot from Dubai, UAE, because they have now showcased two cities, which is equivalent to the best cities in the world, like Dubai and Abu Dhabi. They're itself becoming a brand name, which is close to New York, and maybe it may even overtake New York in the time to come. Of course, Dubai has the longest, the tallest and the widest building. Yes, yes, yes. And even all the cities are becoming a trade their own trademark and which in India we have to learn 
and we will also make trade marks in India like Mumbai and Abu Dhabi. That is what we All the best, sir. My question to Manjula Joshroff. Ahmad will be coming to Hollywood. You are a hardcore educationist. You have created a brand name Calorex. As an education, what you offer par excellence, there is a large gap in, uh, there is a huge demand and a large gap in supply in, in, the, in the kindergarten to 12. What do you feel should be done by India UAE where in this kind of education gaps can be fulfilled? And the teachers, in the programs, what you learn, make the student exchange programs, you feel that further it should be extended to the teachers exchange or or the or the methodology exchange programs wherein both countries can learn each other. Um, every constitution in the world provides a free and compulsory education, which is what we call free universal education. Despite that there are thousands and millions of students that are still out of school. The UAE doesn't have this kind of problem because there's a huge, rich intermingling of societies and a lot of society, young parents come from different uh, diplomatic uh, countries and go back. A, a country like India has a large population still out of school. And one of our challenges in India is to ensure that every child goes to school. And the Right to Education Act that was provided in 2009 strives to do exactly that, to bring every child back to school. In terms of bilateral trade between UAE and India, it has to be a win-win. It's a give and take. That's why it's called bilateral. So I think what we can take from UAE, especially Dubai, I think what KHDA does in terms of its uh, rating systems and its regulatory framework is really excellent. It's very mature and robust as a system. I think that's something that India can learn from. And uh, we've been talking to KHDA a lot. And uh, I think next year is the year of giving. So we're hoping to, to look at what worked and what didn't work for them. On the other side of the coin, I come from Gujarat, which is the land of uh, the Prime Minister Modi. And he's been the Chief Minister of Gujarat for four times. So whatever Gujarat does, I mean, all eyes in India are in Gujarat. So what Gujarat does, apparently, we're kind of uh, out there. So in terms of what we have to offer is a lot. I think we have inclusive education to offer a lot. We have internal diversity, which we can offer. We have very good teacher training that we can offer. And uh, we have higher education that we can offer. Because I do understand that in Dubai, secondary education, I see a lot of Indian population, especially go back home to educate. So I think there's a lot. There is a great uh, demand in India, which is already there and other created by immigrants coming back. Yes. So something, yes. a lot to be done Yes. between India and the education sector. That's right. Thank you. My question to Ms. Kohli Puri, you are a dynamic real estate project management professional for more than 15 years now. I want to ask you about, India doesn't have a shortage of land and talent. And here, UAE has been creating Burj Khalifa and Palm with all the architectural ability of India, what it offers. So, what kind of scenario or a skyline you can create in India? The question of uh, is going to extend it to you. Good evening, everyone. And good evening, sir. Uh, you always need a patron to build a Ibadah Tower, like we have Taj Mahal in India. So, I feel very shortly we are going to have that. And currently, I think India government is working as a patron. And after this, tie up. We will have all the time in the break, sir, to, to mingle. So I guess after you are, India. You are in great demand, yeah. Mr. Hari. So I guess after India, I mean, you will tie up. Very soon we will be seeing such structures in India. 
and we are really looking forward. To yeah, because see, it takes a will. Yes. You know, there is no, there was no consensus passed to build the Taj Mahal. It was a one portion okay. will and decision. Same, same applies to Burj Khalifa. Right. So you know, there is a will. I remember when we had a meeting with Honorable Prime Minister, the one of the biggest developer of Dubai, Tamir, President Federico was with me. And President uh, Prime Minister Modi himself invited him to build a tower of 100 story in Ahmedabad. Exactly. So you know that, that, that takes a will to do this. More, more than you know the, the consensus. Right. Right. We have Mr. Pankaj Mundra. He is a is the chairman of ICAI. Mr. Pankaj, as an eminent chartered accountant, you are currently holding the post of chairman of ICAI chapter. You have more than 15 years of experience in management, accounting, strategy, strategies, and financial planning. How do you find Dubai and Indian Indian business, and vice versa? And do you find work a uh, working environment? in Dubai different than India and how it is different? Thank you Dr. Mustafa. Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to thank our institute uh, who has given this opportunity to me to chair the association of uh, Dubai chapter which is the largest chapter among 30 countries outside of ICA India with 2,200 members working with 1,300 companies. You know, that itself you see if there are 2,200 chartered accountants working with 1300 companies in UAE that show the what best infrastructure which Dubai and UAE is providing. As they say, the infrastructure is the magnet which attract investments. And we all have seen, uh, we have seen this famous picture where we only have a World Trade Center on Sheikh Jair Road and now we have the skyline of Dubai across, you know. So, Dubai has been attracting the not only the investment but the talent for so many years and when you see this 2,200 chartered accountant working with more than 1,300 companies being CFO of large bank and a large registered company, Dubai is the place which has given the opportunity for the professional and business uh, people to come and set up. The key thing which I see is the infrastructure and secondly is the ease of business. Today you can open a new company within a one day or less than six hours a lot of free zones in UAE. So ease of business, less bureaucracy, the government efficiency, that's what attracting the investment. Secondly, as you know, the, the tax regime, uh, of course, uh, Dubai is moving to implement right very, very soon. But still, for so many years, it has been a zero tax regime, which attract and give a good uh, sort of a base to uh, investment. Thirdly, for Indian corporates, it's a gateway to Africa and GCC countries. This is what has been doing uh, for the professional as well as for business people, why they are flourishing in UAE. Of course, you know, with the, with the introduction of uh, taxation, your numbers will soon get doubled. You know? Yes, yeah. we're looking forward to work with all the business houses. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Hariman, I'd like to ask you about the, in, you are a well-known figure in the, in the education industry. Your comments are considered very valuable and your suggestions are taken very seriously. What is the best blend of education with a strong background you can find, you can make between India and, and UAE as an exchange program wherein a, a global leaders are created in both countries also with a global mindset or even the local leaders with global mindset. And creating those leaders, what are the transformation in the education system required? Thank you for recognizing me as an educationist. I would like to put it this way, that uh, in India, and UA, there are two different systems which exist. In India, we cater to masses, we have to take in for masses. Here, we more care about the classes. So, what we can take from UA is the strong will to do. 
which exist here, which I have been studying and seeing in the people, in the, uh, the companies to work, which somehow lacks in India. But what exists in India is a solid system of training of teaching fraternity, which can benefit UA. We are very rich in tradition. We are, we offer variety of edu, edu, of uh, what you call the segment of education, like medical engineering, many, many, which as I told you earlier, only almost maybe 30, 35 countries offer in the world. India offers that. So the things are diverse there. So in the best interest of the world, as Akhil was saying, that when you, for higher education, you have to go there and learn. But after 12th or after 10th, even you have to go there. The system is more involved there. So if we can have an exchange program, the teacher's training program to start with, with a bent of technology taken from UAE, it will benefit India. And teachers' training can benefit UAE. The leaders are shaped. They're not born. They are shaped. If we put some people from India to UAE, looking at the international perspective, which Dubai and UAE offers at the moment, definitely the mindset will change. You mean they are very adapted to the situation, so of course they can. And of course, one, one thing what we see lacking in India in the education system is that those who have skills, they are not knowledgeable. And those who are knowledgeable are, are doesn't possess some skills. Certain bridge programs are required, and therein, you know, the, as you say, the blend of everything will create a good leader. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Ms. Manoj, you are already working in, in with some of the biggest brands and the names like Reliance, BEL, Bharat Heavy Electrical, NTPC, and Badman Group, and the list is quite long. Your product, your, you have provided products and services to the essential to the smart cities. What do you think the UAE can prove to be valuable partner for India in creating smart cities? What are the learnings of, of India from UAE create smart cities? Uh, yeah, uh, see, if new government, you will see their main focus is to digitalize the country. And the first step they have taken, you know, to announce some few, uh, uh, few cities as a smart city. And there is no doubt Dubai is one of the best smart cities. They have the experience, they have the complete infrastructure, they have the complete project plan. India is quite mature in terms of technology developed for the smart city and their products and their solutions. And it is going to be successful to all around the world. But still, if Indian government and UAE government can make a tie up, and as a project consultant, as a project value addition for the smart city program, the solution can be sell out to as a uh, consulting to India because India is already uh, mature technology partner. And we can be also a uh, partner with UAE for serving their more uh, value addition for their another projects and some uh, manufacturing units can be shifted to UAE also for their development. And same way, UAE can shift their uh, value addition services as a project management program. Very true. Very true. Because India is, uh, has created a world record, the largest country wherein the biometrics are, are registered. So India has all the potential to become, to deliver many, many smart cities. Yeah, you're right. Sure. Ms. Manjula, as an immensely successful it has been here for almost 40 plus projects what you have done in two countries. How the Indian education system would grow and develop like the Western education or our traditional education or the blend of both or completely a new perspective on an on education system? What is your opinion on moving forward? You can briefly describe that. So earlier we were talking about uh, globalization. Today we talk about a world called global, which is global as well as local. 
the more the world is shrinking and we are becoming a global village, the more the necessity for us to belong to our roots. Because when we go, when we leave our home country and go abroad, the only thing we represent is our home country. Today, more than ever, it's become very critical that our students learn the pride of their culture. Because inter international mindedness is about tolerance of culture. It's about different cultures intermingling, being inclusive. So I believe that unless schools, unless education system teaches the pride of home, the pride of roots, children will get lost. It is these roots that are going to anchor them in an international platform. Thank you. Mr. Pravin Kumar, you believe in values such as challenging everything, delivering excellence. And with such values, you have created reality revolution in India. The reality sector has hit hard in the, re in the recent demonetization. Is it the right time for India to invest in UAE? Or is it the right time for UAE to invest in India? You can briefly you know, uh, summarize this. See, we can start with one thing, that is the Make in India concept. What is Make in India concept? What is so great about India? We have about 65% population for below 35 years. So, we provide good skill, we provide land at a very cheap cost, and we provide expertise. As far as demonetization is concerned, it is a right step towards bringing transparency in real estate. So you think this, this demonetization will yes. help in the real estate? Yes. It is 100% going to help in the real estate industry. And apart from this so, demonetization... Time to invest in India. See, I will say, for people from India, we will always try to invest in UAE because it is the most centrally located place in the world and we get a gateway to the world through UAE. Or as, as far as the other countries are concerned, yes, they should come and invest in India. And as an Indian, and so, uh, we Indians would really love to invest in Dubai, the reason being, it's a gateway to the world. But it doesn't mean that India is a bad destination for investment in real estate industry, real estate sector. Demonetization is going to bring a lot of transparency into real estate. Now with the GST coming up, like UAE is also going to have taxes and India, one country, one tax, all such reforms will make business easy. And as somebody was telling right now, that in UAE you can open a company in six hours time. Of course, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a long subject to be debated in yes, detail. Yeah, no. do, you, do you feel, you agree that you know, demonetization will help? It is 100 going to, person going to help uh, everybody Thank and you. especially the real estate industry. Thank you. Very briefly, Ms. Kolipuri, you know, if you can just tell me your, as a mission statement, deliver as commitment and what, what, what you mean by that and what are you uh, expecting as an outcome of this? Um, Very briefly, if you can just... Sure, sure. I feel that uh, after this India UAE ties, what we try to do is we ensure that UAE is for commitment, and as UAE also is committed to it, like all the big developers in the UAE, I know they are known for this. So what we feel, we should have more exchange programs and more such industry specialist uh, such forums so that we can exchange our thought process, our uh, construction process, and uh, best practices of the industry to have you know more uh, technology transfer, information transfer, knowledge transfer in every way. That's what we are expecting. Okay. Dubai is all about commitment. Yeah, so Dubai is all about can, and they can learn from this. We still believe in commitment. I think we need to learn about a lot on the quality part of it. <laughs> The, the last question, Mr. Pankaj, is that you, know, you are a co-founder of this Nimai Management. In this, you, know, you, you manage fundraising and specializing in advisory on financial cost minimizing and trade solutions. What is your one tip to the, to the audience on investments in UAE? 
I think my tips as a channel accountant to all the my uh, co-panelists on the dais and all the uh, guests present over here. We are discussing the uh, investment uh, back in India and UAE. I think uh, UAE, especially Emiratis, they have always look for good opportunities. Uh, we have worked with a lot of education where India, the their strength is operation. You know, so they come as an operator in UAE, and then Indian uh, UAE Emiratis who can build this school and colleges. That is called Opco Propco model, property company and operating company, where UAE expert in real estate construction. They can build this state-of-art schools, university uh, clinics, and the operator comes of India, where you know you could uh, probably build that and give it on a lease rent of 78 percent return, and these educations can pay the rental, not taking any uh, sort of a take on the investment as a capital investment. That's one. Secondly, we discuss about the smart city. A uh, lot of investors from GCC are investor interested in fixed return. So one, if somebody, uh, you know, groups or a government in India can give either in the rig a fixed coupon of return, where if I invest in dollar in a smart city, where they have a HP or Infosys taking a office premises, that can come as a fixed rental returns to the investor from UAE to India. So these are the ways that you can give that comfort to UAE investors to invest in India. Of course, with your tons of knowledge, you know, we can have a half day or a full day session then. You can explain the, all the fundamentals of investments in this. With this, you know, we come to a conclusion of this panel discussion. What we discussed, you know, in, in the education, in the reality, in the in the investment, that there is a lot of potential between the two countries. UAE and India, whatever they have achieved is a tip of an iceberg, and and yet and a lot more to be done. And right now, with the conducive leadership on both sides, we are seeing a lot of positive things happening between India and Greece. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.